in the fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel. A reading from the Gospel according to our teacher Saint Mark, the evangelist, apostle, and pure disciple. May his blessings be with us all. Oh, 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 from the Psalms of our teacher Dave and the prophet and king. May his blessings be with us all. Amen. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Christ, Son of the living God, to whom is glory forever. Amen. Now as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he said and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, so whatever you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those of riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus sent it again and said to them, 
Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are impossible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, And surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters, or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my sake and the Gospels. Who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time? Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many are first to be last and the last first. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Um, today's gospel um, is so essential in our spiritual life because it gives us direction how to practice our Christianity and how to receive the call. And as you see from the dialogue between the rich man and our Lord and the dialogue between St. Peter and our Lord as well, you can see a comparison between the rich man when he received the call and when St. Peter received the call from our Lord Jesus Christ. The rich man was coming with great keenness to know how to inherit the eternal life to the point that he kneeled down before the Lord asking him, and the Lord told him to know the commandments. And he said, I knew them since I was young. And then he told him, go and sell what you have and give it to the poor. And come and follow me and take up your cross. And at this point, he was so sad because he was so rich and had many positions and which means he will have to sell what all what he has and he will become poor. And of course, he went sad. So sadly rejected the call of our Lord. And then the Lord had commented about this, um, about those people that are rich, and they are so attached to their money, they will never be able to go to eternal life. At the same token, St. Peter said to him, See, we have left everything and we followed you. St. Peter, when he received the call, he was rich. He had like a company, like for fishing and stuff. He's got like a staff around him and he had partnership as well and he was so rich but when he met our Lord and he told him follow me 
He left everything and followed him. He didn't think about what did he have at the time, how he will live after, what um, is going to happen to him. He didn't ask for any assurance from our Lord. He didn't ask about anything. What did he do? He followed him. And that's why St. Peter was trying to say to him, see, okay, that man rejected the call, but I have accepted the call. But the Lord said to him a very important message to all of us. He said, if you leave anything for my sake and for the gospel's sake, you will get what? One hundredfold here on earth with persecutions, and then you will have the eternal life. And that's what exactly happened to St. Peter. The rich man of the rich youth went sadly, and he might have lived like an infant. 20, 30 years, and where did he go after? He was so attached to his money, and that's all like his treasures. But St. Peter, even he lost everything, and he left everything and followed the Lord. He received more than 100 fold. He left his money, his family, and everything, but he gained a lot. He became one of the apostles, one of the fathers, that he preached to thousands of people, and he became the head of the church in Rome. And he had many people as sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, and even in a symbolic way, wives um, as well. So he got many things. And not only this, all their money were, or the money was underneath his feet. So rich. But in what sense? In the spiritual sense. And he was able to feel that richness and these treasures as a father to many. It reminds me about St. Bishoy Kamil when one time he said to the Sonia Angel, his wife, look, I am so rich. I have many houses. I have a lot of money because all my children's houses are my house and all their money is my money. And can you see that? How important to, to feel that way. And this is exactly what happened. Abu Nabshu Kamil left his job. He was so poor. He didn't work as a priest in any other capacity. And he was so poor, but he was so rich. Even to the point when he was sick, many people offered from their, his sons in America or in Europe to offer him money. He didn't accept. Even during his sickness and his illness. And God has offered to him this through the government by having like the treatment for free um, under you know, the government policy. But he didn't accept. Even he was so rich. And that's why we were poor, but we enrich others. And this is the beauty. When you sacrifice something, you will get 100 fold. And this equation, it's actually a personal experience. And you see this in our church, and when you go around and to the monasteries, you will see very successful people from monks and nuns. They have left everything and followed the Lord. Even one of the conditions that if he is a monk is rich or the nun is rich, to sell everything and to go to the monastery with nothing. This is exactly what St. Anthony did. He had 300 acres sold everything and gave it to the poor. And then he went to the monastery alone 
He went like you know, to the desert alone by himself, and he lived in, in a village, little village, and then in a cave. This is how like we should approach you know, that experience with the Lord. If I leave everything for him, God will never leave me alone, and he will be with me, and he will enrich me with many things. And all what I am going to do is to depend on him, trusting him that we are in his hands. And I'm doing this as well, knowing that, that I'm doing this for his sake and for the gospel's sake, which is the service. But he said something really interesting. He said, you will get 100 folds with persecution. The boy Lord was enough for us to to leave everything for you? Why there is an, in addition to this persecution? Do you know why the persecution? Because Satan is the author or, or the, the, the person who tempts people here, um, or I will call it the author of temptations. Okay. He will never live alone. He will be very, very sad to see us forsaking everything for Christ's sake and for his gospel. So because we despised him and we didn't follow his direction to become rich or to have a good image or to get you know the right or the best thing in the world, this is despising him. And that's why he will tempt us more and he will persecute us in different ways. That's why the more that you gain from the world, the more that the devil will be clapping for you. Well done. You've done right in your life. And this is how we need to change our mindset about this. And we need to think carefully about what we have and why we are working hard in this world to give money, 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 and then I lose my eternal life. Thinking that when I give few things or the tenth of what I have to the poor, that's good enough. I'm doing what the Bible says. But actually, this is not the right way. A lot of people, they think like, you know, getting into good courses, going into university, um, graduated from them to have a good image, to have good money, to live in a comfort way. I had a personal experience um, recently. Someone introduced to me to a high caliber non-coptic specialist in medicine. And she is very, very smart, very intellectual, very knowledgeable. When I was introduced to her, she looked at me and praised me because I have accepted the call of priesthood. Even though it was a long time ago for me, but for her, it's new. And she started to have a discussion with the friends and stuff. So basically, she said a statement, and it was true. She said, the world now, or the society now, makes you work hard and hard and hard, and collect money, money, and money. Till the point that you worship money and you obey the money. And whatever the money tells you to, what to do, you will do it. And that's why people they don't pray, they don't go to the churches, because money is a power. I looked at her and I said, Look, she's not a preacher, she's not a priest, she's not a nun. She's a specialist, worked hard for what she's doing. And I'm quite sure she gained a lot as well. But that a lot is not in her heart. And if you look at it, this is the right wisdom we need to receive in our spiritual life. That I do this by myself, and I teach my kids to do the same thing, thinking this is what take them to eternal life by having the good image, the good caliber, and the good 
um, course and the good profession and the high level of income and this is for them, that's wow. I've done my part. You've done a lot in your life. And basically, all what I said in eternal life, it's a zero. Nothing will be taken into consideration. And that's why here, the Lord, if I have left everything like this, what are you going to give me? And if you make that comparison between yourself and the rich man, you feel you are better off than him. Because he rejected the call, you have accepted the call. But I do a lot of good things here and there. But do you think this is good enough? No, it's not good enough. The Lord wants us to dedicate himself, to dedicate ourselves to him completely. And this is something really important in our spiritual life. I don't want to have any master in my life. I don't want to have any thing to tell me what to do except to hear God's voice and his commandments. To tell me what I need to do in my life spiritually and how can I grow in God's love and in the virtues that I should receive in my spiritual life. And that's why when we come towards the end of my life, what I have done, I have money, I have a good reputation as a professional person, but what I have, what I have to offer to the Lord. And it's something like all of us who are going to present when we end our lives, we need to present our deeds to the Lord, our spiritual struggle to Him, our fruits, because He is going to invite us to the wedding. And usually when you go to the wedding, you need to present yourself with a gift as well. What is your gift you'll be able to present? I would say to you, he does not need your money. He does not need your excellence in what you are doing. But what he needs is your heart to offer it to the Lord. And the more that you are poor, the more that you will be able to offer to him. And you have never heard about a monk is so rich or a nun is so rich. They have forsaken everything for him. And what they are presenting, they are presenting the true fruits from the spirit inside. And this is something here we need to direct our children. The more the important thing is a rela the relationship of your children to the Lord. And I have an example recently about this. The mother said, I don't care about the education. I don't care about anything. I do care about his spiritual life. I looked at her and I praised the Lord because hardly we hear this. Hardly we listen to this. But what we do care about, how those people, they're going to achieve in their life, which course they're going to do, what money they're going to earn, and this has become so overwhelming. And that's why I need you to look at both of them, the rich man and St. Peter. One rejected the call, one received the call. One, no one knows where he is. He died and he left all his money out of his coffin. And St. Peter, he was so poor, he was a martyr, he became a father to many, many people, thousands of people, millions of people. And he was so rich what he received from the Lord. And that's why we have to have this mindset and this desire is to say to, to myself, what I have left for the Lord. Can I say to him, see, you know, we have left everything and we followed you. Can I say it? Can I be honest with myself saying this? But there are certain things as well you can leave. You can leave a wrong friendship or a wrong relationship 
or you can leave a wrong habit, bad habit, or you can leave wrong emotions and feelings towards someone, or you can leave all the pleasures and desires of this world, or you can leave the image, or you can leave the glory of men, or you can leave the loving of the high ranks, either in the community or in a church or in, in work. You can leave all of this. And once you have the ability to leave everything, you'll be able to gain the spiritual um, gifts and you'll be able to present the Lord. The idea about leaving things and forsaking things, it's for you, it's a, a good exercise that I can leave things and then I'll be able to leave and forsake the sin. If I'm not able to leave things, I'll never be able to overcome the sin and leave them. If I'm attached to something very small and it looks nothing, that means I'll never be able to leave what is a little focused in my lives, which are the sins, the little sins that I don't see. By saying everyone does it, everyone um, does the same thing, why not me? Okay, I'm like everyone else. And this is the common phrase that we hear from the youth, like everyone else. And that's why the spiritual exercise we need to think of t today is to think about leaving something for the Lord. And once I leave this for the Lord, I'll be able to leave the wrong things in my life and in my spiritual life. May our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us that call to follow him and to believe in him and to serve him, will work within ourselves and to help me and strengthen me to leave something for him so I'll be able to be pure and I'll present my spiritual gifts to him. Glory be to God forever and ever. Oh.